I'm gonna like switch it up a few ways. Like in, in terms of funny, I didn't know about funny, you didn't say funny before yeah, when you asked me. So if it is funny, that's like really especially great because you know, I didn't do it. And uh, also the ex thing, I haven't had like a, a girlfriend, girlfriend, so I don't really have like an ex, ex, you know? So, so it's gonna be some different exes. And then, um, I'm a, I'm a rapper, so like everything I do is probably going to be a rap, so. But I think it's funnier if you think of this like as a spoken word. <laughs> Alright. So it goes like this. X. Rated magazines had scenes of sex. And I was only 14 or 15 or maybe 6. Teenagers couldn't purchase, so I resorted to theft. Walked in a tattered cover, and here's what happened next. I staked out my position and I plotted my attack. Surveyed them from a distance where they lay upon the rack. A penthouse and a playboy sitting side by side like plaques. I shuffled by and quickly lifted one each from their stacks. The next moments were crucial. I had to move with haste. Display nothing unusual, this was my coup de grace. A stroke of genius I had had when I first cased the place. In my, in my right hand I held, I can't even read, it's like Shel Silverstein, huh? <laughs> In my, in my right hand, I held the mags, front covers face to face. And thus I could roam freely, no alert to passers-by, of the presence of this seedy and perverted bastard child. That was me, I thought, unethical, but how it has to be, as I curled the magazines and stuffed them into deck at speeds. I found some deserted store corner where there'd be no suspicion. It was somewhere on the fourth floor, maybe in the science fiction. I held my jacket under arm with crumpled loose precision, walked out the door, no one was harmed, I'd accomplished my mission. X, men comic books had scenes of mutants, with covers multicolored, holographic and translucent. This phenomenon was what a speculator's bubble grew from, and I saw how I could profit also off of the confusion. After the great Playboy pet house heist, I needed challenge. So I went to Safeway with my backpack and my newfound talents. I moved around in silence, stern and glum like Ragnarok, and then I gathered every X for number one that had in stock. And also several X Factors and G.I. Joes for pleasure, and Marvel Tale, New Mutants, and Daredevil for good measure. Then all at once, down in the backpack went the mighty treasure. I left the store half waltzing and completed my endeavor. When I finally reached my home, my smile was bursting out loud. I had to make my secrets known, I called my friend, told all about how, when he said, that cannot be condoned, and why are you such a loud now? You've been on speakerphone, my parents say we can't hang out now. <laughs> X communicated like I was a murderer. My ex-best friend's parents got the scoop like a sherbert. Plus I told him about the playboys and he told me I'm a pervert. I resolved to exonerate myself with extra fervor. Exhumed the stolen items and examined all my options. I had to try to escape the situation I've been boxed in. So I decided to take the same procedures and precautions and undo the damage done, recoup all my losses. The comic books I really didn't want, I took them back. I snuck them in and put them up again upon the rack. But some of them I wanted after all, I found them first. Plus those X-Men number ones, you never know what they'd be worth. So I devised a compensation plan that I could pull off easily. Upon reflection, probably more complex than it had needed to be. For all the X-Men and the others, I made a precise list. Then went and bought a random stack with all of the same prices. And then I exited the store and waited maybe 12 minutes, went back in and put that stack back on the shelf. <laughs> then left again, victorious, believed that I had canceled my sins and Safeway could end the month with clean financials. <laughs> and then, of course, I had to turn to phase two of the mission. The playboy in the penthouse put me in a strange position. Is this something that I could live without? I thought, it isn't. <laughs> plus, you know, that really, plus, you know, they really weren't um, in that great condition. <laughs> so I wrote, I think what they weren't like stuck together. <laughs> I just knew that would be funny. But I had the pages work just like anyone. <laughs> so I wrote a note, dear Tatter Cover, please let me be honest. If I was old enough, I would have paid for them, I promise. But I stole a Playboy and a penthouse from you, signed anonymous. I dropped it with eight dollars and the box reserved for comments. With all of this accomplished, it was time to call my best friend. A lot of you would probably know this dude, his name is Stefan. <laughs> I asked if we could hang, see Matt, sometimes they're like in the room. And it's like, <laughs> and like sometimes they are, but he's not here. 
had messed up the flow. So with all of this accomplished, it was time to call my best friend. A lot of you would probably know this dude. His name is Stefan. I asked him if he could hang again now that I've learned my lesson. He said, my parents never heard you, man. I was just messing. <laughs> also, those X-Men still have them in my basement with all the right protection so no elements could waste them. I looked, them up, I looked up the collection after 19 years of patience. None of them were worth a dime. Too much speculation. 